Welcome to section six, which is use proportionality theorems. So today, in today's video, we're gonna be learning a whole bunch more theorems that can be used in similar figures to solve for missing side measures. Here are our objectives. We're gonna use the mid-segment theorem to find missing lengths. We're gonna use properties of parallel lines to find missing lengths. And then we're also gonna use the angle bisector theorem. So let's just jump right in with the triangle proportionality theorem. It says, if a line parallel to one side of a triangle intersects the other two sides, it divides the sides proportionally. So looking at the figure on the right, I have two pairs of parallel sides. I know then that the top triangle is similar to the entire triangle. So that will tell me that side AB of the small triangle corresponds to AC of the entire triangle. AE is going to correspond to AD and then BE is going to correspond to CD. So example number one, it says in the figure above, BC equals 9, AE equals 4, and ED equals 6. Find the length of AB. Okay, so I already know that AB corresponds to the entire side AC, and that AE corresponds to the entire side AD. Filling that in, AB is X, AC is going to be X plus 9, AE is 4, and then AD is 10. So remember, to get the entire side, I need to add the two smaller parts of the side. And then use cross products. So I get 10x equals 4x add 36. If I subtract 4x, I get 6x equals 36, and x equals 6. So that tells me that AB equals 6. So this really shouldn't be new. Um, we've done examples like this before, now I'm just calling it a new name. I'm giving the theorem a name. So example number two, it says find the value of x in the figure below that will make BD parallel to AE. Okay, so this one's going to be tougher. I would like you right now to set up the problem and try to solve it. So pause the video, set up the problem, and try to solve it. Good luck. Okay, let's see how we did. Now we want to make BD parallel to AE. If they were parallel, then I know that CB would correspond to CA, and I would know that CD corresponds to CE. Okay, so CB is 4, CA is the entire side, so it's going to be 4 plus X, CD is going to be X, and CE is going to be X plus 9. And now I need to do cross products. So I end up with 4 multiplied by X plus 9, equals x times 4 plus x. Okay, so now I need to distribute on both sides. The left side I get 4x plus 36. On the right side I get 4x add x squared. So I'm going to rewrite that at the top. 4x add 36 equals 4x add x squared. So if I try to get the x's together and I subtract 4x from both sides, the 4x's cancel. So I get 36 equals x squared. Hopefully you remember that the way to get rid of a squared is to take the square root. Now the square root of 36 is just 6. So I get x equals 6. So if you got that right, awesome. If you didn't, that's okay. You're going to have a chance to make up for it later today in the video in tomorrow's classwork. So that's the triangle proportionality theorem. Now we're going to learn another similar theorem. So if three parallel lines intersect two transversals, then they divide the transversals proportionally. Okay, so in the figure on the right, you're going to notice we have three parallel lines, that the parallel lines are in black. And they intersect two transversals. Transversals are in blue. They divide those transversals proportionally. So the first transversal has sides A, B, and B, C. Second transversal has sides D, E, and E, F. So this proportion will hold true. That's all that this theorem is. So let's flip the page and look at some examples. Before we look at some examples, we're going to learn the last theorem of this video, which says if a ray bisects an angle of a triangle, then it divides the opposite side into segments whose lengths are proportional to the lengths of the other two sides. Okay, so this one's a little bit more difficult. It says if a ray bisects an angle, 
So right here, let's mark that. So this angle is bisected. The opposite sides are proportional to the lengths of the two sides. Okay, so my two sides that I'm looking at are AB and BC. Then the last side is the side that is split. AB is connected to AD, so AB is going to go with AD. BC is connected to DC. So really you're doing the whole side over the side that the part of the longest side that it's connected to. Okay, so the whole side AB over the part that it's connected to, which is AD. And then the whole side BC over the part that it's connected to, which is DC. So we're going to have a uh, chance in a few minutes to do some examples. But right now we're going to look at the parallel lines and the transversals. So looking at example 3, it says in the figure below, AB is 17, so I'm going to mark that. It says BC is 11. DE is 3X minus 2. And EF is 5X minus 6. Find the value of X. Okay. So I know that the two transversals are divided proportionally. So my first transversal is divided into 17 and 11. Now 17 is going to correspond on the other transversal to 3x minus 2, and 11 is going to correspond to 5x minus 6. And now we can just do cross products to solve. So I'm going to have 17 multiplied by 5x minus 6 equals 11 multiplied by 3x minus 2. Now, 17 times 5 is 85x minus 17 times 6 is 102. So I get 85x minus 102 equals 33x minus 22. Okay, so I'm going to subtract 33x. 85 minus 33 is going to give me 52x equals, if I add 102 and add 102, that's going to give me 80. Now if I divide by 52, I get x equals 80 over 52. Now you should be able to simplify this. Don't do long division. Okay, simplify the fraction. So I know both are divisible by 2. So if I divide by 2, I get 40 over 26. I can divide by 2 again, which gives me 20 over 13. So in this case, x equals 20 over 13. That's the correct answer. It's okay that it's a fraction. X is just 20 over 13. Okay, so right now, pause the video and try example four on your own, please. Okay, so find the length of AB. You should have set up a proportion. So my first transversal has sides of 16 and X. And then you should be able to fill in the second proportion, knowing that 16 corresponds to 15. If you did this correctly, you would have gotten AB to be 19.2, which as a fraction is 96 over 5. If you didn't get that, then you did something wrong. If you got that correct, great job and move on. If you did not get it correct, pause the video right now and find your mistake. Moving on, we're going to do some practice with the angle bisector theorem. So it says, in the figure below, WN is the bisector of angle W. Find the length of NO. Okay, so first thing that I want to do is mark that this is an angle bisector. Remember that an angle bisector just bisects an angle. It cuts the angle into two congruent parts. I'm finding NO, so I'm going to mark that as X. Okay, so first I'm going to write the, the proportion that should be true. My sides that I'm looking at are WS and WO. Now WS is connected to SN and WO is connected to NO. Now WS is 14, SN is 4 root 2, WO is 7 root 2, and NO I'm looking for. And now I'm going to do cross products. So 14 multiplied by X is 14X. And then I have 4 root 2 multiplied by 7 root 2. Okay, so 4 multiplied by 7 is 28. Root 2 times root 2 is root 4, which is just 2. So really I end up with 14x equals 56. So if I divide by 14, 
56 divided by 14 is just 4. So I get x to be 4, and remember that x stands for NO. So NO equals 4. Okay, so let's do one more harder example with that theorem. If you would please flip the page. Okay, so example number 6, it says find the length of OY if JY equals 20 in the figure below. So I'm going to mark that. So JY is 20. Okay, so if the entire side is 20, and I know that OY is X, then JO is going to be 20 minus X. I know I'm going to be using the angle bisector theorem because I have the angles marked congruent. At this point, I would like you to pause the video and try to set up this proportion on your own. So pause the video, set up the proportion, and solve it. When you are finished, come back, please. Okay, let's see how we did. Now the entire sides are 7 and 13. 7 is going to correspond to the part 20 minus x, and 13 is going to correspond to the side that's x. And now I can use cross products. I get 7x equals 20 minus x times 13 is going to give me 260 minus 13x. If I add 13x to the other side, it gives me 20x equals 260. So if I divide by 20 and divide by 20, I get x equals 13. So this side is 13, which makes this side 7. So in this case, oy equals 13. So hopefully you got that one right. If not, please make sure you fix your mistake. So that has the end end of this video. We use the mid-segment theorem, also called the triangle proportionality theorem. And then we used the parallel lines cut by transversals, and then we also used the angle bisector theorem. Before you go, you are to do example number one on your own, please. You are going to find the length of RQ. When you come to class tomorrow, I'm going to be making sure that you have this problem completed with work, and that you have the rest of the problems done as well. If you have any questions, please make sure you write them down right now so you remember when you come to class. Good luck, and I will see you tomorrow.